Now there have been some complaints that the set here on NCIX Tech Tips is too blue, to which I have only one thing to say. Yo, listen up, here's the story about some new cards from AMD that are using the same architecture as their previous cards. So that is graphics core next to the GCN architecture, but offer some compelling price to performance as well as some extremely exciting new features. In front of me today, I have three new graphics cards, but there are actually more than that coming. So AMD has done a full top to bottom refresh of their graphics card lineup that focuses on delivering that same GCN architecture that we're already familiar with from the 7000 series, but in a more compelling price to performance package and with some new technologies. So at the lower end of the stack, we've got the R7 250, which is a one gig $89 GPU, and the R7 260X, which is a two gig $140 GPU. These are going to be for people who want the best price to performance ratio, and they want a great gaming experience, but on a pretty tight budget. Now the 260X includes one of AMD's exciting new features that's not necessarily on the whole refresh. More on that in just a moment. At the higher end, we've got the R9 series graphics card. So this includes the 270X, which I have right here in front of me, the 280X, which I also have right here in front of me. These are 2 gig and 3 gig cards at 199 and 299 respectively, as well as the 290X, which is being called on the internet the Titan Killer, although no official specs or performance numbers are available yet. Now I want to take a moment and explain the new naming scheme because gone is HD and gone are the, the four digit you know, performance indicating numbers. We now have R9 to represent very high end and R7 to represent more like mid range performance. Then we get three numbers after that to indicate performance, so 250 is less than 260, which is less than 270, 280, 290, and an X in some cases might indicate more performance. So that is basically how it works. Unlike at AMD's live event, I'm not going to talk about true audio technology for longer than just a couple minutes, but it is truly important. We finally have programmable hardware on the graphics card, or at least somewhere in the system. It hasn't been since Creative had their EAX initiative that we've really had hardware accelerated sound. It just kind of went away with Windows Vista. Well now AMD wants to bring dedicated processing back to sound, which is going to enable a few different things. Of course, just more voices, lower system overhead. So in the past, games typically are using up anywhere from five to 10% of your CPU power just for audio, whether it's on a console or on a PC, doesn't really matter. Well, now they no longer have to budget that because they know they're gonna have some dedicated processing for it that can not only take that load off the CPU, but also just do it better. So we'll be able to have more voices, better environmental sound, and it's kind of like adding um, like physics support to sound when you have this kind of processing. So you go into like a dungeon and instead of the developer just kind of like making noises that sound more dungeony and then maybe adding a little bit of like reverb to it and then when you walk out of that room immediately it changes. Instead, sounds will be generated where they're generated. They will bounce off objects realistically and bring more realism to the user. It's also going to allow things like um, software surround but done at the game engine level as opposed to with a USB dongle that's plugged into your computer, making it more accurate because it knows exactly where the sounds are supposed to be coming from. So this kind of processing is exciting. Ultra HD 4K gaming, there's gonna be better support on the high-end cards with particular emphasis on the very high-end cards. But with that said, the 280X is not gonna be a slouch. It does have three gigs of memory, making it optimal for two and a half K gaming with I'd say very high end titles and 4K gaming with slightly older, slightly less intensive titles because it's gonna be pretty similar in performance to the outgoing 7970 gigahertz edition. Then the big news, guys, is the Mantle API. This is an all new way for your game engine, which is what you are gonna to see, to interface with your graphics card hardware, okay? So normally you'd have the graphics card and then you'd have the driver and then you'd have the DirectX API or the OpenGL API and then finally you'd have the game engine. And game developers, according to AMD, have been pleading with them, please let us cut 
DirectX, and even OpenGL out of the mix somehow. Let us program directly to the card so that we are not limited by the number of draw calls that are just completely bottlenecked by DirectX 11. And that, my friends, is where the difference in performance between consoles and PCs come from. Even though we know the hardware is not that powerful there, compared to the PC, is the number of draw calls. So when you're able to program directly to the GPU like console game devs can versus having that intermediary layer, you are able to extract much more performance from the hardware. Mantle is AMD's solution where they are going to allow game developers just like you can do with, oh, I don't know, games like Counter-Strike where you just have a drop down. Oh, I want to use DirectX renderer or OpenGL renderer. Boom. There's going to be a, an additional drop down for Mantle that they're quoting dramatically improved performance. In our imaginations, we can say there's probably dramatically improved performance, but until AMD's upcoming developer conference, it's not going to be clear exactly how much this will improve performance. The great news is that it applies not only to the new R9 and R7 series, but also the last generation GCN cards, which have been out for almost a couple of years now, the 7000 series. So everybody's going to be getting a big performance boost in titles that support it. Battlefield 4 isn't going to have support out of the box, but they're quoting December for when we're going to see support. And I've heard rumors that there's going to be quite a few other really, really important game engines with full mantle support. So you might be wondering, Linus, how did you make it this far into the video without talking about the 290 and the 290X? Well, the answer is that um, there we don't have many details on them yet. So stay tuned, guys. The NDA has not lifted on those cards, but be very excited for when they hit. Now, the last thing I did want to mention is true audio support will actually only be implemented on the 260X, the 290, and the 290X. But Mantle, which I really feel is the truly important thing that's happening right now, is going to be available across the board. Get it? Because it's a graphics board, like PC, printed circuit board. Anyway, without further ado, um, I think that's it for this shot. So if you could, my assistant could just kind of hand me the uh, equipment here. Thank you very much. We'll just set up the next one. Anyway, that's the end anyway. Guys, thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.